Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is create a project that will just be for the recipe templates. So we're gonna create a new project. We're gonna do 12 by 12, hardbound. Make it blank. We're not gonna add any photos and then we're gonna name it. Project recipe templates and create. And it'll open up the new project for you and then you're ready for the next step. So the first thing I like to do is open up the project recipe PDF and then I'm going to go up to edit and click on take a snapshot. I'm going to lasso around the sketch on the first page and then I'm going to go into my project and paste it and then I'm going to go back to the PDF and I'm going to do the same thing for the cutting guides. So now that I have the cutting guide and the layout, I can kind of keep them as a reference tool and then I don't have to keep going back and forth between the PDF and the project while I'm working. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is cut all of the pieces of paper um, and I'm going to make them the same color that they are in the cutting guide so that when I'm putting the pages together, it'll just make it a little easier. So to do that, I'm going to start on the Insert tab, and then I'm going to say Insert Shape. It's going to be a rectangle. And um, the beautiful thing is you don't have to guess on the proportions. I can go right up here and do 6.5, Tab, 4.5. And then I can remove the outline. We don't need an outline on this. And then I'm going to change the fill. I'm going to sample this green color because this is the one I'm working on. And say OK. And then you hit Create. All right. So I've got my first piece of paper, and that's C right here. Well, D is the exact same size, so I'm just going to go ahead and copy and paste that. Alright, so I've got those two. Um, next, I'm going to work on E, um, F, and G. Those are pretty easy. So I'm going to do insert shape. It's a rectangle. Go ahead and take off the border. That is three and a quarter. So 3.25 tab, 3.25 tab. I'm going to fill that with the same color. That'll be in my recent now. And I'll say OK. And I need three of those. So I'm going to copy. Oops, just kidding. Forgot to hit Create. Don't hit, forget to hit Create. And then I'm going to say Copy and Paste and Paste. So now I've got three. And you can keep track of what's going on over here to the right. Looks like my paste my last paste didn't work there we go so right now I've got five green and I need one last one so I'm gonna insert shape rectangle now this is the long um, skinny pieces that actually get cut over here um, they, so they are um, like they are nine yeah because four and a half and four and a half is nine so they're going to be nine so I'm going to say um, one inch by nine inches I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the border and I'm going to fill with the green okay and then create I'm going to copy that and whoops, copy and paste. Okay, so the green is done 
And now I'm gonna go ahead and do the blue and the peach, but I'm not gonna bore you with that. So um, the next section of the video, they'll all be made. Um, and then we can go on with the layout. Okay, so now it's time for me to add the photo boxes. And down here on the cutting guide, it says photo sizes, two four by six, two four by four, and then three two and three quarters by two and three quarters. So what I'm gonna do is click on the insert empty frame, and here it is. It just adds it right to it. And then up here is your width and your height. So it says four by four. Well, I do need two of those, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste so that I have two of those. Then I'm gonna add another one, and I'm gonna change that one to four by six. And once you change the number, just hit your tab, and that will change. Then I'm gonna say copy and paste for that one, because I need two of those. Then I need three, two and three quarters, so I'm gonna add another one. So the default is four by four. Um, I'm gonna change that to two and three quarters, tab, two and three quarters. And now I've got that little square, and I'm gonna copy and paste that twice. Okay. So I should have three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. I have seven photos. Those are the gray boxes. I've got three blues. One, two, three. They correspond to HIJ. And then I should have five peach, which I do. And two, five, seven green. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so now that I've checked, that all of those are there. I can push this off to the side so that it's out of my view. And now I'm gonna be using this guy. I'm gonna move him up to the top. You can just drag these elements on the side um, or you can go to a range and say bring to front. Okay, so this is what how the layout is gonna be. And I'm gonna place all these um, in the right place, but I'm gonna change my view to a two-page view first. Okay, so now would be a great time, if you haven't already, to hit this little save icon, and then you'll see your page populate. Um, I realized when I was about to switch to a two-page view that I hadn't done that, so go ahead and do that. And as you're working, you'll wanna do that occasionally. The program will save automatically when you switch to another page or it'll ask you if you want to save your changes. But when you're working a lot on one page, it's good to just, you know, save every now and then, like with anything. Okay, so now I'm going to change to a two page uh, view. Um, so you're going to go to the view tab up here and then the spreads and change to two bound pages. You have some other options here, two separated trim pages, two separate pages. It depends on, you know, what your end game is going to be. And for this purpose, it really doesn't matter which one you choose. Um, since we're, you know, going by this template, just looking at this, probably this little thin piece of blue is what's going to end up in the gutter. But I just kind of like to see what it'll look like in a bound book. Um, but you can, you can do either. Now... If you have Artisan 4, one of the nice things with 5 is that you can work on both pages basically at the same time. So you can drag pieces across this middle line. It'll actually go on that page. In Artisan 4, people would do that. They would think they're putting it on this page and then they would switch over to that page and um, they would say, "I, you know, where is it? and it was kind of like off in this no man's land. So you, if you have Artisan 4, then you probably experienced, experienced that. One thing to keep in mind though, as you're moving across the pages, and uh, this is probably just a glitch, is if you move the page, um, move the piece over, you'll see that it's over here. And once I click on the page, 
It's actually on this page. It's under the elements. But if I hit save, it does not populate over here. And if you switch back to this page and then back again, it will not be there. So you have to nudge it and then hit save. So the place where you first drop it, it, it won't actually save. I've tested this um, numerous ways going back and forth with pieces. So I don't want you to be frustrated thinking you hit the save button and it looks like it's doing it. So um, that is a little bit of a, of a bug I think I found. So just go ahead and just nudge it one way or another and then hit save and you're, you're good to go as you're moving things across. So um, I guess now I will uh, do these um, smaller, these blue pieces since they're actually going in the back. So I'm going to move this one over here, let it go, kind of, I'll nudge it, move it back, and then hit save, and now it'll populate over um, let me see, where are my, this little piece is going to go here, and then this other little piece is going to go here. We need to move a 4x4 four four photo and a 4x6 photo over to the other side. So I'm going to move this over here. And actually, I designed them in landscape, but let me sh obviously, we're just going to switch the height and the width. So it's actually going to be 4x6. That's the orientation that you need there. I'll hit save again before I move back. I just feel better hitting save in between each of these moves between between the pages. And let's see. I need to do the same thing for this one. Let's switch this one. Four by six. Your tab or your enter if it you know it hasn't populated this one's kind of going up at the top this one's going to be down toward the bottom and then we've got our three that are going to be in this vicinity over here this is starting to get in my way so I'm going to continue to move these around and shuffle shuffle these things around um, oops, this peach page of this peach is going to go under here. I'm going to, now it's on top of here, right? But we're going to drag it to underneath the 4x6. And the easiest way I find to do that is over here. That's the fastest way. Um, now we've got them on top of each other and we can hit save. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out the rest of these and then we can go to the next step. Okay, so everything is laid out just like the um, project recipe design guide. Um, I did leave one thing over here. Um, if you're more used to working in Artisan 5, then this isn't um, news to you. But this little, um, little uh, ribbon up here is new in Artisan 5 from 4. So... What's nice is you can either rotate, like this is supposed to be the text box. Um, so you can either hold the, the green circle and rotate it, or you can come up here and change it. So it's three by four and a half. So you can also change, swap these numbers like we did with the photo um, with the four by sixes, um, or you can just turn it by, by hand here. And um, these little green lines that pop up are really helpful in getting things straight. Um, so because it's the same color, it'd be kind of hard to remember where your journal box is. And, you know, with like anything, this is just a template. It's just a guide and you may end up changing it. But I'm going to go ahead and um, switch the color to 
um, just a light kind of gray. So I remember that it's there and, um, and, and don't, don't forget. All right. So is this something that you would want to do for just one, two page spread? Maybe. Um, but the reason why I suggested you started a project recipe a template, um, project is because once you've done the work, now you can pull these pages into your other projects. So instead of working in this book, what I'm going to do now is open up another project and show you how to pull these pages in. Because, you know, if you just leave these as your templates, basically you're making your own 12 by 12, um, you know, page layout um, kit templates um, so that if, you know, we you can get these and you can use, if you've got old paper ideas hanging around, you can use those. You can use other design guides. The Creative Memories blog has design guides. So instead of purchasing them, you can go ahead and make your own templates and then just use them over and over again. So um, I'll show you how to do that next. So now that this one's done, I'm going to go ahead and um, switch my view back to all of a single page and I'm going to save, I'm going to cut, it's on the right page, right side over here. I'm going to go ahead and cut it and leave it on the outskirts of the left side next to the original cutting guide and that way if I ever have to refer back to it, it's there. Um, it's off the off the page, so it's not something that's going to get in my way. It does it, it will come over when you import the page. It will come over to your new project, but um, that way it's there for you to reference if you need to. Go ahead and save that, and then um, now I'll show you how to import these templates into another project. Okay, so now that I've got my template done. I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to make it hardbound, blank. Next, we'll name it. I'm just going to call it 2020 family. Create. All right, since I'm I'm going to start on a two page spread. I'm going to click down to page two. And what you're going to do is say up here on the home ribbon is add a page. You're going to say add a page using a file from my computer. So I went ahead. Normally your 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 project should be in your documents, but this one is out on my desktop so that I can get to it easier. And this if you click up here so that you can toggle through your choices you can see the previews so I want this one for page two double click on it and it's gonna load in um, the print this print guide is great but sometimes it's a little much so I'm gonna go ahead and move that now it did move it down here to page 22 so I'm gonna go ahead and slide it up you just drag it up to page two now I'm gonna click over to page three and say sorry so that it won't add it at the bottom we're gonna go to template instead so on when you're clicked on three we're gonna select the same option use a page from your computer okay it can't be undone all right we don't need to see that again I'm gonna go back out to the desktop click on this page this time it's going to load it in we'll say save so now I've got the two pages I just made in my 2020 family album and what I'm going to do is now change the view back to the bound page spread view Okay, so we've imported our pages into our album that we're actually working on. And I'm going, and I've brought my pictures in that I'm going to use. I'm doing a New Year's layout. Um, 
and now I've got my Cheers theme kit uh, ready to go. That's a uh, Creative Memories digital and paper, one of the new theme packs. Um, so I'm going to use that. And remember, you can get digital content. You can buy it from Forever. You can buy it from Creative Memories still. Creative Memories doesn't sell the programs anymore, but you can still, anything that's offered in paper, you can purchase the digital version of. So I'm going to toggle back over here to my photos. And it's just a little two-page layout of my husband and I on New Year's. Um, our, both of our kids are in college, so it was just us this year for, for New Year's Eve. And so I'm going to go ahead and load the pictures in to do that. I'm just going to drag them over. Um, we love Snap, Snapchat filters. They're lots of fun. So I'm going to just drag these in. Um, this is set to all photos. I like to have it on photos not used. That way I don't use one that I've already used before. Put these ones over here. I'm going to jump over to my content. And so this is where it's kind of like paint by number. So we've got papers and embellishments, but I want to use the paper over here. So there's three different papers and we have three different colors of things. So I think I'm going to make the peach um, the, the um, darkest one. So I'm just going to say fill selected shape. It gives you an option if there's a pattern which part you want to use. I don't I don't really care. So I'm gonna go ahead and do all the peach of that first. Go ahead and fill selected shape. Okay. I'll save that. Then I'm going to come over here and do the same thing. Fill selected shape. Fill selected shape. Save that. And then I think I'll go ahead and make um, this cheers pattern paper the, um, the blue, the light blue. So I'm going to say fill selected shape. It's going to give me a chance to pick, pick the one that I want. Remember there are two, um, there are two different um, pieces of blue over here. I guess essential for the um, paper version because one uses one side of the pattern paper and the other is for the other side. In this digital version, we really could have just done one piece bigger. Um, but since I was making it exactly, um, I just leave it like that. If you want to, you know, switch things up, you can also just, you know, fill it with a solid color. And so then the last would be these, um, these uh, green pieces. So I'm going to do that. Fill those. So I'm going to keep filling the green ones and then I'm going to show you what to do with these um, because in the original design it was actually you're using the border maker. So we have a couple options there and I'll show you what those are. Okay so I'm done changing the paper and now I'm going to show you um, some other cool thing. So these theme kits have these pages that are like um, are cut aparts in the paper world so that you can use them you know as different embellishments and add them to the page. Um, so that's where choosing the piece of the paper that you want to use comes into play. So I, ha I don't have another picture to put here so I'm going to go ahead and say fill selected shape and then I'm going to 
just grab the part with the champagne glasses. So I'm gonna just dial in with using the the tool so I just get in those champagne glasses and then I'm gonna say okay and now it just filled it with that part. Alright and then over here come back here um, where these two little green strips are on the in the paper world for the the recipe that was going to be using border makers you were going to cut a border out of two pieces of paper and use one side of the paper and the other well so this theme pack it's you know most of the kits come with some type of a border so these I would just look at them as kind of placeholders so I'm just going to go ahead and delete these two green items I I know that's kind of my end game is to put something there and I'm going to drop in um, this arrow border here I'm gonna go ahead and flip it so that it's facing down you can stretch it um, you know the whole the whole way or you can um, cut it so that it will match the um, ori original size shape that was going to be there and again these little green lines that pop up are really helpful I do like to use um, the um, shadow on these type of elements so that it looks like they're popping off the page and then for the other one um, I was going to use this heart but I don't know how I feel about the heart sideways I mean it works I guess um, but I was thinking I could also just use those arrows again and just flip them so that they're going the other way. Um, yeah, I'm not, I don't really love that. So I think I'm just going to copy this and paste it. And now it's right in the middle of my page. Go ahead and move this here but now I'm gonna flip it twice so that I've got one set going up and one going down all right and next the only other thing I have to do is if I want to add any other um, any other embellishments or um, I'm gonna switch to this side and you can add some more embellishments however you want it Again, I'm going to add in a shadow and I don't know I think that's pretty much it except for um, my journal box and I I can just add that after but for the most part I think that pretty much does it maybe I will let's see add a part here this is giant above the champagne glasses. Add another. And then I can add my journaling and my pages are done. So I'm gonna hit save one more time and the pages are done. So now I've got that template saved in my template project so that I can um, use that same template again and again. So I hope you learned something new, if not about the uh, project recipes and using them as templates in digital scrapbooking, then some other technique. So thanks for watching, and I will hope to see you soon. Stay scrappy.